The next thing we're going to get into is the workflow. Now, the workflow, I like to say that the workflow is really the backbone of the PDM system. So when you're implementing PDM, this is an area that you give a lot of consideration to. And this is really where we gain a lot of intelligence and efficiency from the software itself. Think of the workflow as like being an electronic version of your procedure manual. If your procedure manual states that your documents must have a set of checks and balances before being released to manufacturing, then the workflow that you configure or that we configure for you um, should be configured to electronically reflect that approval process. The workflows additionally control access to files at different stages. So through the approval process, you might want to change who can modify files, who can access them, and, uh, and that can be all done with permissions through the workflow. As a file flows through the workflow, the workflow can automatically update file properties with things like revisions, electronic signatures, and, and more. And it can also send out notifications to let the next person down the line know that the file's coming and we require them to do something with it. The way that files move through the workflow is using something called state changes. Now, a state change is a mechanism or what we call a transition. So it's a transition from one state to another as the file progresses through the workflow itself. Now, to access this function, you can right click on a file or there is a menu at the top and uh, you can access the transition through that as well. Now, just a, a little point I have on my slide right there, the files have to be checked in to change state. So we talked about checking in, checking out um, when we're doing modifications. If you're going to move the file through the approval process and through the workflow, then the file must be checked in. Uh, the transitions themselves, what appears to you, again, is controlled by permissions. So what your administrator allows you to do is what shows up what you have the ability to do right here. Let's take a look at this one in action. So for this one here, we're gonna jump into this folder here and I'm actually gonna grab a real simple structure here. If we take a look at this drawing, you can see it's just a, a part and a drawing. Now the drawing itself, if we look at the face of the drawing, um, we have a watermark on it tells us it's not approved for manufacturing. If we zoom in a little bit to the title block, we have no engineering approved and we have no revision on the file. If we look at the interface at the top, we have a column here that says states and it shows us that the file is in a state called under editing. Now, if we wanted to move this through the workflow, you could either access the change state transition through the right mouse menu or you could access it through the modify menu they both do the same thing when you select the file it brings up a change state transition dialog and in here you can add some great information the first thing that i want to do is i want to transition both files together and so i'm going to check the box that, allow, that brings the CAD file, the 3D file, along with the 2D drawing. This can be configured to automatically be checked for you. So it's again, something that's configured by the administrator. In the transition dialog, there's a comment here. And I'll just put a quick note in there of what I'm doing. There's another note field which is the notification comment. So this would be what you would notify the next person down the line. They would receive this notification comment in an email. Okay, so we'll add that. And then over on the right hand side, you get to pick who is being notified. So in this case here, I'm going from a state called under editing and I'm submitting it for approval. So I'm gonna pick a manager here and we'll pick Grayson. That means he is going to get the notification. When we hit change state, you can see the file goes to the next state in the workflow process, which is waiting for approval. 
Now, as I mentioned, the uh, the permissions can be controlled at this level. So we can stop engineers from or drafters from checking out files when they're waiting for approval. And what that would mean is we would have to log out of the system and log back in to move this through the next workflow transition. And for this one, I'm going to take on the role of the approver. And we'll simply log back into the vault and we will find that file in that location. At that workflow state waiting for approval. So we have a decision to make here. We would review the file and we would either send it back for changes or we would approve it for manufacturing. We will follow the same process and we'll say that this is now past approval. We get the same dialogue that pops up for the transition. We'll add a comment here. And we'll add a notification comment. And we'll send that back to Chris. So when the file now goes through change state, it goes from waiting for approval to approved. If we refresh our view down at the bottom, we can see that now the file's watermark shows that it's released for manufacturing. We can see it gets a revision on the file and we can see the engineering approval has been added to the title block also. Now to just quickly review what we've done, the workflow itself is where we obtain things like electronic signatures, automatic notifications, and it's where we can do things like incrementing the revisions of the files. As I mentioned earlier, the workflow is basically our electronic approval process. The workflow just simply makes our job of managing documents and approving documents much easier by doing a lot of these manual tasks for us electronically.